In this video, I'm gonna break down the total synthesis of suffering. This target has some fascinating structural features. Exploring the synthetic procedure really levels up your understanding of organic chemistry, and 3D representation gives you a crystal understanding of structures that you don't see anywhere else. So let's dive into it. Suffering A belongs to the diterpen natural product family. The first thing that grabs your attention is a central sacrobutin ring. Interestingly, it contains two quaternary chiral centers. In addition, this molecule has a unique 6455 tetracyclic carbon skeleton, including seven contiguous stereogenic centers, three of which are quaternary. Now let's see why these features make it such a challenging target. Obviously, the first challenge is constructing the strength four membered ring at the center of the molecule, because it's highly substituted, and the substituents need to be installed in the correct orientation. The second challenge is the presence of three quaternary chiral centers which brings in serious spheric interactions. Recently, Professor Minji Dai's group from Emory University introduced an effective approach to overcome these challenges. So let's get us started with the retrosynthetic analysis. The group designed this compound with the C5 ketone as an intermediate toward suffering. There is actually a later stage prefuel decoration that involves two structural changes. First, an oxidation state adjustment, which is the installation of the hydroxy group at the C6 position. Second, the introduction of a hydroxyl methyl group at C4. The presence of the ketone at C5 is a strategic decision because it allows activation of C6 and C7 in its conjugated form, and it set the stage for constructing the critical four-membered ring. There are two common strategies for creating a cyclobutene ring. The first is ring construction of a five-membered ring, like the Faworski rearrangement or Wolf rearrangement. This concept is called molecular editing, which is actually a hot topic in modern organic synthesis. The second approach is a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition between two olefins. The strategy that was used in this reaction is called metal hydride hydrogen atom transfer or MHAT, which involves a radical process. This enone can be achieved by dearomatization of the benzene ring, but controlling the stereochemistry of the hydrogen atom is challenging. The 5 membered ring can be constructed by a conia end reaction of an alkyne. The ketone can be installed on the 5 membered ring using a double bond. The 6 and the 5 membered ring can be assembled through a Suzuki cross coupling between a bronic acid and vinyl triflate. This triflate is traced back to the cyclopentanol, and the substituents are installed on the ring by a sequence of enantioselective selective addition of an isopropyl nucleophile and 1 bromo 2 butyne. Now let's go through the forward synthesis. The first step is a 1 4 addition of an isopropyl group to cyclopentanol, but it's not a simple micro reaction because the isopropyl group needs to be installed below the plane of the ring. So a chiral n heterocyclic carbene is used as a chiral ligand with copper triflate to induce chirality. Next, the crude product is dissolved in HMPA, an aprotic, highly polar solvent that stabilizes the enolate. There are actually two types of hydrogens in cyclopentanol, but its reaction is under thermodynamic control, so the more stable enolate is formed under the reaction conditions. The enolate when attacks 1-bromo-2-butyne via an SN2 type reaction. Notice that the reaction is also stereo-specific because the bulk isopropyl group blocks the lower phase. So the butyne is installed on the opposite phase of the isopropyl group. I separated this reaction into two steps just to make it easier to understand. But it's actually a one-part procedure and the product is formed with 81% enantiomeric excess. In this compound, there is no alpha hydrogen at its position, but another alpha acidic proton is open for business. So KHMDS abstracts a proton to produce the enolate. Next, the nucleophilic oxygen attacks a sulfur atom in Cummins reagent, and then the rest of the Cummins reagent act as a good living group, leaving us with a vinyl triflate. The next step is Suzuki coupling, where commercially available 4 methoxyphenyl bronic acid is coupled to the vinyl triflate using palladium. If you wanna go deeper into the basics like cross coupling reactions or how chirality is in use, check out the Synthesis Studio series where I break down the core concepts in detail and explain how they are applied in real synthetic procedures. Now the double bond undergoes epoxidation using MCPBA. After adding tosylic acid as a proton source, the ketone is introduced into the molecule through a Meitwald rearrangement. First, the oxygen atom is protonated by tosylic acid, which leads to the ring opening and creation of the carbocationic center. This carbocation is stabilized by the aromatic ring. After that, the tosylic ion takes back the hydrogen, and the bonding electron is moved into the carbon-oxygen bond. Then a 1-2 hydrate shift occurs which gives us the ketone functional group. The interesting point here is the stereochemistry of the hydrogen that's positioned below the plane. Before migration, it had the same orientation, so that means that the shift happens with the retention of stereochemistry. 
From an orbital perspective, the upper lobe of the empty p orbital at the carbocationic center and the carbon hydrogen bond are in the same phase. That's why the migration occurs with the retention of stereochemistry. The next step is cornea and cyclization. Both gold and silver complexes are used to create the 5 member ring. So it's basically a dual mode of activation. On one side, silver triflet coordinate to the oxygen atom, converting it into the inner form. On the other side of the molecule, the gold complex activates the alkyne. So we've got a nucleophile enol and an electrophile alkyne. As a result, the 5 member ring is constructed through a 5 endo dick ring closure. Next, the carbonyl group is reduced by lithium aluminum hydride. If you look at the cis conformation of the two fused 5 member ring, the curved shape creates convex and concave faces. At the ring junction, the aromatic ring and the methyl group block the convex phase. So the nucleophile approaches from the concave phase instead. Because of that, the resulting hydroxyl group ends up positions below the plane. The next step is Birch reduction, in which the anisol moiety loses its aromaticity with the help of lithium. Firstly, lithium is dissolved in liquid ammonia which produces an intense blue color due to the presence of solvated electrons. These electrons act as reducing reagent and enter the lumo orbital of the phenyl ring. This step can be represented as a formation of a radical anion which has one excess unpaired electron. The radical anion is very basic so it picks up a proton from the ethanol present in the reaction mixture. The molecule is no longer anionic but it still contains a radical. It then accepts another electron which pairs with the radical to give an anion. And this anion is squished again by ethanol. In our case, the donating methoxy group stabilizes the ortho and meso electron density. So these positions are protonated by ethanol. But it's not the end. As you see, HCl is added to the reaction mixture. The double bond is activated due to the donor methoxy group, so it becomes protonated under the reaction conditions. Subsequently, this intermediate undergoes hydrolysis, leaving us with a ketone functional group and a double bond in the ring. Next, the resulting secondary alcohol is protected by acetate. And notice here that the reduction, the Birch reaction, and the acetate protection are all done in a one-pot procedure. After that, bond isomerization takes place by adding HCl. Mechanistically, the double bond is protonated in acidic media, leading to the formation of a secondary carbocation center. Then, the conjugated product is formed, which is a driving force for its isomerization. Controlling the stereochemistry of this hydrogen is pretty challenging. The others pointed out it depends on reaction time, temperature, and scale. The desired stereochemistry was achieved in just 6 hours. But if the reaction goes further, a different diastromer is formed. So we can deduce that this product is the kinetic product. And if we allow more time, the thermodynamic product is formed instead. Because of the short reaction time, some of the starting material remains unreacted. So the recovered starting material was subjected to the same reaction conditions again. After two cycles, the desired product was obtained in 61% yield. Now it's time to couple the two olefins and create the central four membered ring using the M hat strategy. First, Fe3 is converted to its hydrate form with the help of phenyl silane, which generates a reduced Fe species. Our intermediate contains two types of olefin. One has a donor metal group and the other is conjugated with the ketone, so it acts as an acceptor olefin. The donor olefin abstracts a hydrogen radical from the Fe hydride, forming a radical intermediate. This radical is stabilized by the hyperconjugation effect of the methyl group. Now this highly reactive radical species attacks the acceptor olefin to create a four membered ring. The newly formed radical intermediate is stabilized by the carbonyl group. Then the radical is converted to an anion through a single electron transfer mechanism, which generates Fe3. Finally, the anion abstracts the proton from the solvent, and the catalytic cycle is repeated. Now let's take another look at this beautiful reaction. Forming a four membered ring is always challenging because of the ring strain. But its approach is really powerful because it uses an inexpensive iron catalyst and a silane reducing agent. An unreactive olefin can be directly drawn to another electron deficient alkene in an intramolecular fashion. It allows us to produce highly substituted four membered ring that in some cases would be impossible to make without their approaches. The presence of the carbonyl group enables us to install the hydroxy group at this alpha position. To do this, we first need to create a silyl enol ether. The enol is generated using HMDS as a base. At the same time, TBAP as a fellerized source attacks a silicon attached to the imidazole to form a reactive pentavalent silicate. This then condenses with the hydroxy group and releases the silyl ether. 
This approach has two big advantages. It works under mild reaction conditions and it gives high regioselectivity. In fact, a catalytic amount of TBAF acts as a smooth silyl transfer catalyst, moving the silyl group from nitrogen to the hydroxy group. After acetylation, the hydroxy group is installed on the molecule by rubatum oxidation. First, the double bond undergoes epoxidation with osmium tetroxide. Then, the oxygen of the epoxide ring is protonated. Next, the non-bonding electrons of the oxygen atom shift to the carbon-oxygen bond, causing the ring to open and creating a carbon-oxygen double bond. At this point, the desired hydroxy group is correctly installed at the alpha position. Finally, after hydrolysis, the desired product is formed. In the next step, the hydroxy group is protected by TBS using 2,6-lutidine as a base. After that, we're gonna install an ester group at this position to create beta-ketoester. To do this, LIHMDS is used to form the enolate, which then attacks a methyl cyanoformate, also known as Manders reagent. The ester is introduced into the molecule through an addition elimination reaction, and notice that the cyanide is much better living group than the metoxy group. Using Manders reagent gives us control over C alkylation. Other reagents like isyl halides or anhydrides usually give a mixture of O and C alkylation. Next, we're gonna introduce a double bond at this position using the selenoxide elimination strategy. The hydrogen between the two electron withdrawing groups is highly acidic, so pridine acting as a base abstract like that proton. Now we've got a good nucleophile that can attack selenium. After that, selenium is oxidized by hydrogen peroxide. The resulting selenoxide abstracts like the beta hydrogen and leaves the molecule through elimination. Now it's time to remove the carbonyl group. First, we need to reduce it to an alcohol. But since it's conjugated to a double bond, it has to be reduced selectively. The loose reduction does exactly that. It selectively reduces the carbonyl group to an allylic alcohol. This selectively can be explained by HSAB theory. If we want to reduce only the carbonyl group, we need a hard nucleophile. In this protocol, the hardness of the borohydride is increased by replacing hydride group with methoxy group that comes from the solvent. In addition, the cerium salt coordinates to the carbonyl, which increases the electrophilicity and make it more reactive toward the reduction. Now we want to remove the hydroxy group using barton mccombie deoxygenation, which employs 3-butyltene hydride and AIBN. Let's look at the big picture of the reaction first. The alcohol is converted into thiocarbonyl derivative. After that, the carbon-oxygen bond is cleaved and the desired product is released without the hydroxy group. This part of the molecule leaves as a carbonyl sulfide, while the remaining methyl sulfur attached to the tin, forming a strong SNS bond. To create a fire carbonyl, sodium hydride as a base deprotonates the alcohol and then it attacks the carbon disulfide. Next, the negatively charged sulfur atom attacks methyl iodide via an SN2 reaction. Now let's go through the mechanism step by step. First, AIBN, acting as a radical initiator, undergoes homolytic cleavage. This expels nitrogen gas and produces a radical species of cyanide. That's why AIBN is called radical initiator. It generates with free radicals. Next, the cyanide radical attacks tributyl tin hydride and abstracts the hydrogen atom, giving us the tin radical. The newly formed tin radical then attacks the sulfur atom of the fire carbonyl, forming an SNS bond. As a result of the cleavage of the CS double bond, a carbon radical is created. Then the carbon-oxygen bond is cleaved to create another radical species along with diphyro carbonate fragment. This step is called beta session because the bond at the beta position of the radical center is broken. Finally, the carbon radical attacks another tributyl tin hydride, abstracts a proton, and regenerates the tin radical to continue the chain reaction. At this stage, the hydroxy group has been removed. The unstable diphyro carbonate byproduct undergoes rearrangement to produce carbonyl sulfide gas, while a stable SNS bond provides strong driving force for the overall reaction. In the next step, the ester group and acetate are reduced by D-ball, and then the resulting primary alcohol is selectively protected by TBS. Next, the secondary alcohol is oxidized by IBX. Eventually, the target molecule is formed after deprotection with hydrogen fluoride.